Hello and welcome to West Country Wanderings and welcome to the penultimate episode of the Severn Way. I'm currently here in the town of Thornbury in South Gloucestershire. In fact, we'll be in the county of South Gloucestershire for all of today's walk. We're going to walk to the town of Oldbury on Severn, or village should I say, which is where we finished the walk last time. I'm about a couple of miles away from Oldbury on Severn at the moment. And the reason I've started here at Thornbury is because unlike last time, I won't need to return to my car. I've left my car here in Thornbury. I'm gonna to walk to Albury and then we're, then we're gonna start the walk proper from there, retracing from where we left off last time, following the banks of the River Severn, going over, last time I think I said but we went under both bridges, we're gonna go over the, the older bridge, the one that was opened by the Queen in 1960s, and then under the new one which opened in 1996 off the top of my head, to make our way to Severn Beach. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna catch a train into Bristol and then get a bus back, which are fairly regularly from Bristol back here to Thornbury. So no return walking today. So easy going hopefully. It should be a cloudy-ish day but mild, no rain hopefully. Um, it'll probably warm up later in the day so that's why again I've started early. It's just after half past five here in South Gloucestershire at the moment. Beautiful morning. I'm actually next to Thornbury Castle and Thornbury Church which lies just outside of Thornbury Parish. It used to be part of Tewkesbury Abbey. Well, part of that and what was under their control now comes under the Diocese of Gloucester even though we're in South Gloucestershire here and I think Thornbury is a place we will explore on a later date here on West Country Wanderings. Anyway enough of me rabbiting I need to get some miles under my belt we're going to make our way across now towards Oldbury on Severn cutting through what is Thornbury Park and on the edge of the castle part of which the wall you can see behind there the castle is actually now a hotel and restaurant but I'll include some clips of it I just shot earlier as I was walking to here. Good easy walking at the moment. We're walking on farm tracks or farm lanes, part of Thornbury Park. I think it's called Park Hill Farm is the name of the farm that we're walking to. And thankfully the cows are on both sides of the fence there, not uh, crushed up against a wall by Kissingate like we saw the other day when I was looking for remnants of the Chard Canal. Anyway, our journey continues along here towards Albury on Severn. Now we have a bit of a dilemma here, our public footpath, well you can see the arrows there. I've just come through Park Hill Farm and we need to go right, so we've just worked our way, skirted around Park Hill Farm there, past the farmhouse, which is fine. Um, and we've got a stream here, but it's, the arrow is just vaguely pointing off to the right, and um, we need to go somewhere over there, but I can't make out how we get around here because it would indicate that the footpath goes to that field, but there's no easy access into that field. There is a gate there which is roped off. I'm just concerned that if I get to the other end, I'm just gonna be faced with a load of electric fences. What I may do is continue on this track. I know it's slightly longer, which is very scenic anyway. We'll take this track till we hit the main lane going into Albury. In fact, we can see Albury on Severn Power Station over there, so it's inside. We'll do that, I think. I think that'll be an easier route. On the hill over there, 
is Aubrey on Sevens Parish Church. And that's where I finished Seven Way 24 last time. Got beautiful views from there. I'm going to make my way to another hill though. It's called Toot Hill, also in Aubrey on Seven, which we didn't have time to, to look at last time, which is, I think, a fort, perhaps Iron Age. Let's go and investigate. Well, welcome back to Old Brion 7, just over the left there, where the, I think the bikes are just whizzing over it now. That is the Old Brie Brook, which comes out at Old Brie Pill as it enters the River Seven. So this is the Toot. It's a highish plain above the village covered in little hummocks <laughs> at the moment and the embankment is just the other side of that uh, hedgerow there. So this is the top of the toot. You can't get any views like you do from the churchyard there but yeah this is once an Iron Age hill fort commanding position above the village of Aubryon 7. So I now made it back to Aubrey on Seven. Unfortunately, a couple of the footpaths seemed to be blocked off crossing the toot, and I was in a bit of a panic. Well, actually, it took me about 30 minutes to get off the toot to make a, a big diversion. Anyway, I'm back here in the village again, but uh, it is actually Roman fort, so though it was an Iron Age fort originally, later on there was a Roman fort. In fact, in front of me, there are a couple of cottages called Roman Camp Cottages, which is, yeah, great. I don't know that much more about it, if I can find some more information. I'll put that in the usual way, scrolling along the screen now. Make our way now into the heart of the village and then we're going to go over the Oldbury Brook or Oldbury Pill and then turn right to make our way back to Sabrina, which what will be for the final time here on the Seven Way today. Now come around to the Memorial Village Hall here in Albury on Seven, which I think was restored with some National Lottery funding recently. And there is a nice seat there for uh, Remembrance, well, Remembrance Sunday, Remembrance Day, and for remembering the two world wars here and the people who lost their lives from the village as well. So it's beautifully done. I think I'm going to make this my first pit stop though for a cup of tea. Yes, I think this walk, because it's the penultimate one, and the last time we'll be walking alongside the River Severn today, will be a time to reflect on our journey so far. If I got a chance, I might insert some clips from the previous 24 videos that I've done, following the entire length of the River Severn. Now, I can't believe that I've been walking alongside all of it since, well, it's some time ago now. I can't remember how long ago it was because I've been doing this over a period of time and there's been lots of winter months where there's been so much heavy rain and flooding in the river valleys of the River Seven, which has just made it impossible to do any filming or walking alongside it. Now we've got a, a drier spell for once, be able to complete it over, well, today and uh, in the next couple of weeks to make our final journey into the city of Bristol. Just to let you know, the last bit is called the Bristol Link. So it's not, well, it is kind of part of the official Seven Way. It also follows the King George, not King George, <laughs> the King, the current King. Um, he, his journey, the, the coastal path is named after him. So part of the peninsula of the Southwest is called the Southwest Coast Path. But other parts of the coast of England are now named after the King, King Charles Footpath. And we'll be walking along a section of that today as we'll make our entrance to Seven Beach. And then finally, next time, we'll be walking into Bristol itself. And that'll be a long one. That'll actually be 15 miles long from Seven Beach into the heart of Bristol. Anyway, I'm going to draw my tea and then we'll continue our journey here. I've been thinking about what have been my favourite sections of doing the Seven Way, but I've got so many that uh, I particularly have enjoyed doing the Seven Way, and the whole thing has been an amazing experience. Uh, I mean, so few people actually do it, which I've talk, touched on before. I think the first thing that sticks in my head, though, is looking for the source. When we went up to look at where the River Severn starts its journey there on Mount Plymouth. And that was a very eventful day. I'd actually booked in Central Wales. I think I'd stayed in Welsh Pool. I think it was Welsh Pool. And then made my way to Llanidloads and uh, Rydia Bench, which isn't it, which is like the forest park there, which I think might be owned by one of the, is it Welsh Water? I'm not sure. 
and possibly the Bosch version of the Forestry Commission. Parked my car there, made my way then to the summit, and when I set off, it was dry, sunny, the forecast was good. And making my way to the summit, the weather changed completely unutterably. We had rain, then very heavy rain, then winds, then hail, then snow. By the time I got to the top, I was absolutely drenched, freezing cold, but still nonetheless delighted to see the source of the River Severn. Anyway, we're going to continue on. That's that uh, community shop I spoke about in the last episode. Obviously, it's closed at the moment. It's still only about 20 past seven, so I'm walking through Oldbury. And we're just coming up again to... The Oldbury Pill, which is why we need to walk over that, because previously, of course, the last time we were walking down one side of it, and you saw that sluice gate, and now this time we need to walk down the other side, so Oldbury on 7 power station is down that way, and uh, well, it's just a, such a pleasant morning here. I, I know several of you have actually walked this section from Oldbury to Seven Beach, and it's a section I'm probably least familiar with. Uh, I haven't been to Seven Beach probably since the 1970s and uh, I'll tell you about it when we get there because it used to be a seaside resort. I know it sounds unbelievable now but it was a seaside resort with hotels and resorts and well we'll talk more about that when we get there but uh, here is our Oldbury Pill again which was only sluiced over in the 70s and there it is down there. Prior to that, the uh, village did flood, unfortunately, on several occasions. But uh, thankfully now... Oh, we've got an egret down there. You can just make that out there. I'm not sure that's going to appear on the camera or not, but uh, that was a welcome sight. And now I've just got the uh, the anchor in behind me here, which um, is a nice place to stop as well if you're stopping by here on this section of the Seven Way. Our walk today is a little over eight miles, but of course I did the walk from Thornbury to Albury on Severn first, so that takes it up to about ten, ten and a half miles, allowing for that little detour around Toot Hill, if you want to do that bit as well. There is very limited transport in Albury on Severn, so be warned of that if you want to do this section of the Seven Way, that's why I did the extra bit to Thornbury here today, but uh, Looking at the OS, not the OS map, the travel line app, looks like there's a fairly frequent, well about every half hour I think, bus service from Cabo Circus in Bristol to the centre of Thornbury. And then it's just a short walk well out to work, back towards the castle, which is in that area where I park my car today. So it's still a beautiful day here. I'm starting to get warm. It started off about 16 degrees. I think it's already getting up to about 18 or 19 degrees as we approach quarter to eight in the morning here. So we're now looking back to Aubrey on Seven Power Station, which we passed last time. We've got some Canada geese mixing with the sheep here and looking across there towards Thornbury Marina. Thornbury Yacht Club, I think. It's also got quite a few boats moored up on the tide banks of the Aubrey Pill here as well. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is our river. Welcome back to Sabrina. And then round here is the Seven Bridge. The first one, which we'll be walking over the top of, actually, not underneath, but over the underneath the newer one later. Now, it hasn't all been plain sailing doing the Seven Way. There was one spectacular disaster, and that was a section in Paris in Mid Wales. And I was walking, I think, to Newtown. And I was, I'd caught the train to Mid Wales that day, and I needed to get back to Birmingham New Street to get the train back to Cheltenham Spa and then the train back to where I live in Gloucestershire. Unfortunately, when I got to Newtown, my train, uh, which was going to go on to Birmingham New Street, had been cancelled. There was another one, but unfortunately the knock-on effect of that was it meant that I got to Cheltenham Spa later. Yes, you guessed it, which meant I'd missed the last train in my train home. So I was stuck at Cheltenham Spa. But thankfully GWR came to the rescue and I explained the situation, showed them that uh, a screenshot of the train had been cancelled and they provided me with a taxi back to where I live, which was good. So, but it was a bit frustrating at the time when you suddenly, I suddenly saw that sign saying cancelled, not delayed or running late, but cancelled. And the knock-on effect that that had. I think I had to wait there two and a half hours for the next train to Birmingham. Yeah, I'm feeling quite emotional today with it and also it's at this point where the 
River Severn effectively ends and becomes the Severn Estuary and the Bristol Channel as well. Further on down there we have more rivers that go into it, uh, not least of which the River Wye. Now the River Wye actually starts on the same mountain, unbelievably, as the River Severn. You probably need to go back to look at episode one again to have a look at the full story about it. There was a fable, wasn't there, to do with the, the three sisters. And uh, it makes its way on a more direct route to meet up into the Bristol Channel at uh, Chepstow there, near the bridges. In fact, there's the first bridge, the first seven bridges, actually not one bridge, but two bridges. The bridge that's over the River Severn, of course, but there's another bridge. It's actually a separate bridge which takes the motorway, what was the M4, now the M48, over the River Wye. So it's an incredible piece of construction. The newer one, of course, doesn't need to do that because it's lower down and the River Wye's already met the River Severn at that point. So it's just one tidal stretch of estrine water. But uh, there it is, Severn in all its glory there. And uh, yeah, in terms of emotion, there's it's been various bits where it did get quite emotional doing the walk and I think the one that really kind of pricked my conscience was seeing Telford's Bridge at Budley. So I, the, the first sections of the Seven Way were obviously not in the West Country Wanderings area at all and I've spoke to this about before because I don't generally cover Wales for various reasons and it, I had a dilemma when I started to the Seven Way I was just going to do the bit from Worcestershire down to where we're going to today and then to Bristol. But then I thought, well, I, I might as well just do the whole thing. It would make more sense to just cover the entire river. And that section in Wales and in through Shropshire, I wasn't, fam- apart from Ironbridge, I wasn't familiar with at all. But it was when I got to Bewdley, a town I am familiar with, and I saw Telford's Bridge over the River Severn there, walking towards it, I did feel... Ooh, Yes, a little moment when you think, cracky, I've walked all the way from mid Wales to here. Not in one day, I know that, but uh, it was still quite a a strange feeling. But uh, yeah, and I had a couple more of those on the journey as well. When I saw the Cathedral of Worcester, there, that iconic uh, view of the cathedral with the swans in the river from Worcester Bridge, you know the one I mean. And again, when I got into Gloucester and I saw Gloucester Cathedral there, that's not next to the River Severn itself, but when I walked up to the front of Gloucester Cathedral, yeah, it was another moment. <laughs> Especially be, you know, coming from Gloucestershire as well, knowing the county very well. And I say I'll probably get a bit of a moment when I enter Bristol next time as well. Not sure about Seven Beach because it's not it, it's not a it's it's a strange destination really, isn't it, for the Seven Way because when I was doing the Cotswold, you had Chipping Camden and Bath, both beautiful places. Um, Seven Beach, probably less so, but it does have some interesting facets to it, which we will explore. And uh, if it's a nice day like it is now, when we get there, there should be some good views across the Severn Estuary as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll have a look at that. <coughs> So we're now coming up to Littleton Pill. In fact, there's a little village, maybe a hamlet, called Littleton on Severn, just a little bit further inland. It's linked to the Severn Way by the Jubilee Way. So we need to skirt around this. You see the cows are on the other side of the, uh, the pill there. So we're just following the flood bank here. And I think we just get it. I think there's probably going to be a sluice gate over there somewhere. So this is Littleton Pill here and uh, yeah we've just come round the bank there, just round it. I guess maybe this was put in round about the same time the one at Albury was to prevent flooding in Littleton upon Severn. The farmer just there on his quad bike checking his dairy cattle there, checking everything's okay. Strange names for you around here. I don't know if you can see the electricity pylons 
the one in the middle there is near a, a clump of trees and that according to my OS map is called Potato Clump. Strange. Over here this section of the river is known as Salmon Catch. I don't see any fishermen in it at the moment. I don't know if you can make out the Y bridge from here so that is obviously the Seven Bridge quickly known as the Old Seven Bridge and spinning around further on you'll be able to make out two white towers surrounded by trees that is the Y Bridge carrying the M48 over the River Y. In actual fact about two years ago I made a video called A Tale of Three Bridges and it looks at the three Y Bridges so you've got the one in Chepstow which carried the what was then the A48 into Gloucestershire across from England into Wales then of course you've got the newer A48 which runs parallel to another bridge a railway bridge carrying the main line from Gloucester to Chepstow and this one over here carrying the motorway across the river Wye. Yeah, tale of three bridges. And my favourite one is actually that first one I mentioned there. The original bridge carried what was then the A48 into England and Gloucestershire. It's a beautiful bridge. It was repainted a few years ago. It probably needs repainting again now. But uh, when I filmed it and took some photographs of it, it was looking absolutely stunning there, just in the shadow of Chepstow Castle. <laughs> Well, this is an amazing find, isn't it? This is an old railway truck van. I'm not sure which. I'm sure one of you will be able to tell me exactly what type of railway van this would have been on the railways. Why is it here? I have no idea. It's on a concrete plinth, as you can tell. There's some steps the other side of it. I don't really know what it was used for. I hesitate to guess, it says salmon catch earlier on, didn't it, in the river? Remember I mentioned that when I was talking about, uh, what was it, potato clump up there? And there are some stakes out in the estuary there. I don't know if this was used for catching salmon at one time, and perhaps the fishermen used this as some kind of storage for their fishing equipment. I don't know. If you do know, please drop a comment below. But it makes a very photogenic sight here on the banks of Sabrina. Well, the Severn Estuary as it is now with its width extending right out, just coming up underneath the Severn Bridge. And just in case you're wondering where that first Severn Bridge is, well, yes, there it is. Magnificent span right across the Severn Estuary there. And then obviously it continues on over the River Wye, a bit further over that way, Second Bridge. I say it was opened in 1966 and it remains an incredible engineering concept, doesn't it? Just the, the sheer beauty of it. I actually prefer this one to the second one, but they're both amazing pieces of engineering. This bridge actually replaced the Aust Ferry. Indeed, you had to uh, either go all the way around Gloucester and down the A48, or you had to wait a long wait for the Aust Ferry. We'll be coming up to the village of Aust shortly after we cross over the M48. So that's what we're going to do next. The ground here is actually littered with pieces of concrete and I would imagine that's something to do with the construction of this Severn Bridge when it was originally built. Now I've just seen something here which may give us a clue to our railway truck we saw earlier on. You can see some bricks in that there. That's amazing. And I'm wondering if when our bridge was under construction that there was a temporary railway here. Not a permanent one obviously, but uh, just a temporary one to facilitate the construction 
of the bridge. I'm not sure. I will need to go back and do my homework on that one and uh, see if I can bring you an update. Uh, or perhaps you know yourself if you do, drop a comment below. But uh, it's an interesting area. I've never been below the Seven Bridge before. I remember going across it, walking across it, when I was at primary school. And that's an experience in itself. Walking underneath the red sandstone cliff here. But it's tough going because the hoof marks that the cows have made have made it very, very ridgy. Quite a tricky section that was, although it doesn't look like it, it was quite difficult. Another feature of the rocks here is the blue lias clays, of which that is a particularly good example. You can actually see the blue lias clays line very clearly marked there, along the top of the cliff, earlier deposition. So the red clays and sandstones underneath. Sun's just catching the top of the two towers there at the moment. To say I've made a little bit of an error here. I carried on down the track there heading towards the Seven Bridge and that's the wrong way. There's no sign. What I needed to do was turn up here to go on the path. Again it's not marked at all. To go above the cliff so we can get across the motorway. Oh well you live and learn. But anyway it was good to see those rock formations at the base of the cliff though. However, you are rewarded with stunning views once you climb up the side of the cliff. Got this nice welcome and cooling little wood here at the moment, just before, oh, the Aust Services area. Bit of a contrast here, that's the section I've just come through which is heavily overgrown. And now I've got a different view here. We've come to this. Now this was once all services. It's not anymore. I think it's the offices of an insurance company. That used to be an amazing cafeteria with views over the bridge and the Severn Estuary. But uh, it's not open to the public now. It's now I think it's a private staff canteen for aforementioned uh, offices. But we have got a seven-way confirmation marker down there, which is always good to see. Actually, these uh, buildings actually do look derelict now. It just seems such a waste. They've now moved the service station, still there on the M48, but it's further back and it doesn't get any views at all. Very small service station now. I know the aforementioned service station may be closed. These views are now only open to people walking along the Severn Way, of which there are very, very few, because you can't get access to this path from the current service station. It's all locked off and highly secure, but this is a right of way that skirts around the office block Oh, that's a magnificent view of the bridge. There we go, there is a nice little plaque there, sadly worn though. Seven Bridge, opened by Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II, accompanied by His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh, on the 6th of September 1966. Nice little plaque here as well, the Seven Y Bridge, to give it its full name. I'm glad they did that, because Seven Bridge is not the full story, of course. Dedicated to world peace as a Sir or Sri Chimnoy Peace Bridge on the 15th of November 1991. Bridge joining England and Wales links with many international sites dedicated to world harmony and the fulfilment of the unlimited potential of the human spirit. That is really, really nice. As the countless drops of the boundless ocean or the myriad leaves or a huge banyan tree peacefully remain side by side, even so, all human beings will someday live side by side in a perfect oneness world. Sri Chimnoy. Sri Chimnoy, 1931 to 2007, was known worldwide as a dreamer of peace and he dedicated his life to the service of humanity and is the founder of Inspire of the International World Harmony Run. And it has its own website. And this is the car park of the former Horst services till it got moved and which is now sadly empty and derelict. And so we need to go this way to Orst. I'm not going to Chepstow, that's if we were walking across the bridge. But uh, yeah, it's nice to see the seven way path signs there as well, it's good. One public footbridge over M48. I think that's somebody in the uh, 
garage behind me there. But I get the impression this footbridge is used for very, very little. Lots of abandoned things here. That's the abandoned toll bridge offices because there used to be tolls on the Seven Bridge, of course, and uh, they stopped, I think, about three or four years ago now. It's free to enter and leave Wales on both of the Severn crossings. And that's the view looking in the direction of Bristol, Bath, Swindon, Reading, London, etc. And there is the Severn Bridge, as you would see it almost from the road. Of course, we're above the road here on this lovely footbridge. We're currently on a slight diversion to the village of Orst and its lovely church there as well. It's great. Just decided to sit in the churchyard just to chill out. It's quite getting quite warm now. Now coming up to 10 o'clock, but we are about halfway on our journey to Seven Beach today already, which is, uh, I'm really pleased with the progress so far, despite those uh, couple of hiccups around the toot in Aubryon Seven at the start, and also uh, going underneath the cliff, as well as going on top of it. But uh, you've got some extra shots there for your money, if you like, not that you're paying, but you know what I mean. I'm enjoying the water, it's a good day. Um, so we're gonna continue from here, gonna rejoin, gonna cross over that busy dual carriageway that joins up with the M48, go the other side of that and follow the old lane that goes down to Old Passage, which is where the ferry left from, going across the River Severn into Wales before the bridge was built. It's amazing to think that at one time all of the traffic heading into South Wales or from South Wales towards Bristol, the West Country, going up the Midlands, would have come along this road because they're about to use the Orst Ferry. Let's see if I can find some photographs of when the Orst Ferry was in action. I think there's a couple that exist showing the Seven Bridge being constructed behind it. Amazing. This literally would have gone from being very busy to completely quiet backwater like it is today overnight as soon as that bridge opened way back in 1966. Also Old Passage itself is actually down this footpath here but it's not on the Seven Way itself but as we go along here a bit further which is now of course King Charles, I can't remember that, King Charles England Coast Path which is what effectively we're on now. I think it's like shaded pink on the OS map not sure why but uh, yeah so that's looking back towards the Severn Bridge and we're heading this way down towards the new Severn Crossing which is called Prince of Wales Bridge and the Severn Beach which is where our walk ends today. A wall which has recently been built here which is now part of the new flood defence scheme to protect the hamlet here Old Passage and there of course is the new bridge just the other side of the wall. So over here is called Orstworth which is like a marshland area and that means that we're a bit further away from Sabrina at this point. This is a newish road, more part of the flood defences paid for in conjunction with South Gloucestershire County Council and Bristol City Council, I think. I think that's right. <laughs> So that's looking back, that new road I had to come along. The footpath is actually closed at the moment. The footpath itself, the seven way, is actually on the embankment over there. But obviously they've not finished. The embankment works off yet for the flood prevention and there is the, the mighty Seven Bridge making its way across to Wales. But we need to make our way across to Seven Beach. Now it's worth noting at this point that the seven way, unfortunately, I, th I think it should be, but unfortunately it's not a national trail. Now because the England Coast Path is a national trail, it attracts much greater funding from central government, which means that in theory at least it should be better marked and have better access in terms of stars and kissing gates, that sort of thing. Now, if you remember last time we had this strangely titled World's End out for, here it's called Cake Pill. Any ideas how that got its name? Now, if you think about it, that's actually a significant moment back there, going from seven way markers to England's coast markers. It means we're now on the coast of England. Think about the concept of that. For all of the videos we've been doing so far on the seven way, we've been following a river. It's now longer a river. It's part of the coast of England. That's amazing. 
There you can just see the extent of how wide it has become even since the start of our journey at Old Brion 7 this morning. Now we've gone across by the Severn Bridge there over the M48 and making our way towards the M4 and our final destination by the banks of Sabrina. And now looking down on what's called, and I'm not sure if this is the right pronunciation, Northwick Worth. W-A-R-T-H, not wharf as in what we come across on canals, but wharf. An important site of special scientific interest and for nature and bird life here. And it pans around and then coming up to the M4 and the Prince of Wales Severn Crossing. From this angle here you get a, a good indication of both bridges. So there we're looking at the Severn Bridge and moving across to the left you can see that the smaller and shorter Y bridge but also significant bridge to get the motorway across from England into Wales. It's quite surprising I've actually seen other walkers on this section of the Severn Way. Well what is the Severn Way and England's coastal path and for the first time I've actually seen some new Seven way signs, although there's some workmen working over there, so I couldn't grab a shot. But uh, good to see they're putting some investment back into the Seven Way, albeit only this final section down to Seven Beach. And I just get the sense that there might be some kind of social momentum for this to be a thing, maybe it'll become an Instagram thing. It's a pity that the other 24 sections tend to get largely forgotten which is such a shame but uh, I'm doing my best to promote it but hopefully people will see it and uh, be inspired to walk on other sections of it as well. Anyway here today is absolutely beautiful on this section here to Severn Beach. Just that blue shimmer across the Severn estuary there and uh, it's just a fantastic day just to appreciate this awesomeness and just how wide the river has become as it's turned into the coast point out a major difference between the two bridges at this point. The first seven bridge is a suspension bridge. The cables are suspended across those two towers which hold the bridge upright. The second seven bridge is none of these things. It's actually what's known as a cantilever bridge. It's a combination of those pillars until you've got that central section there on a cantilever with lots of different splays. So there's a lot of engineering that's taken place in this area for the new flood defence works. Most of it, I think, has been finished here. We've got a new sea wall here to stop the land flooding in that way. And also what that will do is it make it not only reduce the harm to the dwellings and the properties and the people that live here, but also to make sure that the land can be cultivated all year round not just when it's not flooded and you have these glass panels and we've come across these before when we're at Upton on Severn in Worcestershire by the banks of the River Severn so they've used the same concept here as well. So this is the Environment Agency's new tidal gate it's not been completely complete yet but uh, the gates are in place they're just folded back and it says that the gate will be closed two hours before and an hour after high tides in excess of 8.9 metres AOD, not sure what AOD stands for, including the surge measured at Avonmouth. Now arrived at New Passage and this has a significance in terms of the railways. A broad gauge railway arrived here from Pilning, Pilning Low Level in around 1863 and it went out onto a wooden pier where the passengers disembarked onto a ferry, took them across the Severn estuary there to Portoskewit on the South Wales side. That carried on for 20 years or so until the Severn Tunnel opened. Severn Railway Tunnel that is. In fact I'm thinking of doing a separate video about the Severn Tunnel because I've been reading a book about it recently. It's an amazing piece of history and I think it's certainly worthy of its at least own video in itself. With the coming of the railway here to New Passage just at the edge of Severn Beach about a mile north from the village centre itself. Hotel. This is a New Passage Hotel here and what was the purpose of that? Well it's when the passengers are waiting for the train and the ferry at the other end on beyond the pier to take them on via boat to Porter Skewit. But this site here would have been an absolute hive of activity with its railway and level crossing keeper as well with the connection to Pilning Lower Level Station.
Well, that's it. Our penultimate journey along the Seven Way has come to an end. To here, to Seven Beach. But this will be the last time that we'll see Sabrina. Well, we'll see Sabrina a little bit. Though she's not really Sabrina anymore. She's the sea. The river has gone into the sea. And we'll be starting from here next time, making our way into the city of Bristol. It's going to be a long one. It's 15 miles from Seven Beach, right into the heart of Bristol, to conclude this epic journey here on West Country Wanderings along the Severn Way. I hope you've enjoyed it today. This section from Albury to Seven Beach has been a shorter one today, but still there's been lots to see along the way. I particularly enjoyed seeing, looking down on the Severn Bridge, the first Severn Bridge, which I think is more complete in terms of how it looks, but both of them are amazing bridges and to be able to walk over one and underneath the other, that was fantastic. And also starting off this morning by Thornbury Castle, that was lovely with the light there as well. It's been a very enjoyable day. Hope you've enjoyed the video too. Until next time, take care, all the best. Bye for now.